So while Lauren Boebert was on the House floor speaking out against the uh, censoring of her colleague and fellow insurrectionist Paul Gosar, she took some time to uh, attack Ilhan Omar in the most brazenly racist way imaginable. Take a look. The speaker has designated the floor to discuss members' inappropriate actions, shall we? The Jihad Squad member from Minnesota has paid her husband, and not her brother husband, the other one, over a million dollars in campaign funds. This member is allowed on the Foreign Affairs Committee while praising terrorists. A Democrat chairwoman incited further violence in the streets outside of a courthouse. And then the cherry on top. My colleague and three-month presidential candidate from California, who is on the Intelligence Committee, slept with Fang Fang, a Chinese spy. Let me say that again. A member of Congress who receives classified briefings was sleeping with Florida. the enemy. This is unacceptable, and this would never Gentlemen, be... Gentlemen, his time's expired. Gentlemen from Florida. First of all, what the fuck? Second of all, this is why... People like Ilhan Omar receive nonstop death threats because of things like this. She's a member of the Jihad Squad, and uh, she's praising terrorists. So these insurrectionists that follow Lauren Boebert are going to think, wow, this person is wanting to do Jihad. In fact, she's a member of the Jihad Squad, and on top of that, she was praising terrorists? This is bad. It's like, She's almost a traitor or something, and maybe she shouldn't be in Congress. Maybe we should do something to stop her. This rhetoric leads to deadly consequences. It leads to death threats and violence. And she just flippantly said that on the House floor for everyone to see. She is absolutely shameless. On top of that, she uh, commented on Ilhan Omar's brother-husband. So there is this conspiracy theory in right-wing circles about Ilhan Omar that she married her brother in order to get a visa to come to the United States. I'm probably bungling the specifics of that conspiracy theory, but it doesn't matter because it's factually incorrect. There's no basis in reality. And this is brotherism, albeit for Ilhan Omar, because since she's not actually someone who was born in the United States, since she is an immigrant and a refugee from Somalia, they have to find some way to delegitimize her. So it's she married her brother it's it's truly um it's transparent like it's the same playbook that we see for members of congress who are um not white now when it comes to the allegation that ilhan omar paid her husband over a million dollars in campaign funds that is true because her husband does run a consulting firm called the e street group and democrats in minnesota filed an fac complaint over the fact that she paid her husband's consulting firm a lot of money now it's not unusual for consulting firms to be paid lots of money in fact they're overpaid and democrats need to stop relying on consulting firms and it's also not unusual uh, for members of congress to hire their family as staff right now Nepotism is pretty rampant in Congress. Um, that being said, though, I do actually think that this is a valid criticism of Ilhan Omar. You can make this criticism, and I'd agree with you. I do think that it's a conflict of interest, and I do think it's unethical. So if I were Ilhan Omar, I would not do this. I would uh, terminate the contract with my husband's consulting firm just to make sure that there's not even the appearance of some sort of, uh, you know, um, corruption or, or really, you know, nepotism going on. And she did just that. In fact, after she won her re-election campaign in 2020, she did terminate the contract that she had with her husband's consulting firm. I mean, she should have never hired his consulting firm in the first place, but credit where it's due. Now, if I am Lauren Boebert, when it comes to conflicts of interest, I am definitely going to shut the fuck up about that, considering that Lauren Boebert literally has been accused of using campaign funds to pay for her rent and utilities. Yeah. Oh, and on top of that, she also conveniently failed to disclose that her husband is also working at a consulting firm. In fact, he works for an energy consulting firm, and she didn't disclose this fact, which she needs to because it's a conflict of interest, before she was pushing to loosen uh, drilling regulations. So it's interesting that she's calling out Ilhan Omar here when she's guilty of doing the same thing. Uh, but on top of that, you know, for someone like her where there is so many people in Congress who are just straight up corrupt and they're taking legalized bribes, Lauren Boebert doesn't care about corruption. Someone like me can, I think, uh, 
criticize Ilhan Omar and her hiring her husband's consulting firm and actually have credibility here. But for someone like her, she has no credibility because she doesn't care about corruption. Otherwise, she would call out the conflicts of interest that are abundant in Congress. But she's only targeting Ilhan Omar because, let's face it, Ilhan Omar is brown and she's wearing a hijab. That's why she's doing it. Let's be clear. We don't have to mince words. She's racist. I think that's pretty obvious to people, and we don't have to, you know, dance around that conclusion. I think it's fairly obvious if you have two brain cells to rub together. Now, Ilhan Omar actually responded, and she hit back hard, tweeting out, Luckily, my dad raised me right. Otherwise, I might have gone to the floor to talk about this insurrectionist who sleeps with a pervert. I am grateful I was raised to be a decent human and not a deprived person who shamefully defecates and defiles the House of Representatives. Damn. So not only is she calling her an insurrectionist, which is true because she was quite literally tweeting out the location of the Speaker of the House while the insurrection was taking place, why would she just randomly tweet about where the Speaker is? Because you want her to be a target. But she's also calling out her husband. I mean, it's only fair game, right? Lauren Boebert called out her husband, and Ilhan Omar called out her husband for being a pervert. And that is absolutely true. So uh, back in 2004... Lauren Boebert's husband, uh, then I'm assuming boyfriend, he actually got arrested because he exposed himself to two young women at a bowling alley. Now, to make matters worse, she was with him at the time and she was 17 while he was 24. So I don't think it's a stretch to call him a pervert. In fact, I think that it's factually accurate to call him a pervert because that's what he is. So at the end of the day, the attacks on members of Congress that don't look like other members of Congress are going to increase because what we're seeing with Marjorie Greene, uh, with the Lauren Boeberts of the world, the Paul Gozars, is they're actually fascists. They are racist. They don't hide behind dog whistles. They come out and they say the quiet part out loud. And that's bad because we want these fools, we want these fascists to not feel so confident in their ability to say something like this because they know that they can get away with it, right? We need to make it socially unacceptable for them to say something like this. They need to feel as if there's consequences if they say something that's just explicitly racist like that. But there are no consequences, and that's celebrated. There's probably a lot of her supporters that are saying, that was a based-ass comment for you to call out her being a Jihad Squad member. So, you know, until we start to make it really uncomfortable to be openly racist again, things like this are going to happen. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.